So I created this tutorial because I got a lot of questions, a lot from a lot of students about, you know, what do you use Illustrator for, Photoshop for, and Design for? What do you want to use each program for? You know, it's like the lines have been blurred over the years with Adobe. Um, a lot of the programs can do very, very similar things. They can all kind of do web, a little bit of all of print. You know, Photoshop can do vector. I'm kind of old school, and I kind of believe that, you know, you should use programs for like what it's specifically created for. I mean, Illustrator is a vector-based program. It's using lines. You really want to use things like vectors, uh, logos, illustrations, vector illustrations, infographics. You can certainly do web layouts and web banners and posters in there as well. Um, Photoshop is a bitmap program, so it means it's made up of pixels and dots and photos, retouching, things like web layouts, mockups of uh, web banners, um, uh, websites, um, email, newsletters, layouts um, could certainly be done in Photoshop. Um, InDesign is perfect for anything that's multi-page, so layouts, publications, anything with 60 pages, 45 pages, 44 pages, um, flyers, posters, anything with lots and lots of text that's going to be very dense, that's going to need a lot of typesetting, that's InDesign. Um, you want to bring elements in InDesign from programs like Illustrator and Photoshop um, and not try to do necessarily everything in one program. So it's great to have these three. These are the sort of three major programs that designers would use. I'm sure there are people who would use a lot of other ones, but these are sort of the real core and these are the three that you really need to know. So we'll go over a little bit, you know, here's a logo that I did many, many years ago um, in Illustrator. So you have, it's, if you click on it, you can see it's all vector-based. I can manipulate the lines. I can change sort of the color scheme however I want to. You know, I can go in here and I can click and drag and I can change, you know, the color in there. CMYK, I can make it Pantone. All right, so if I'm, if I'm creating a logo, you know, and then whatever color I want to use, I can go in there and manipulate it. Right? So I can save that as an AI file or I can save it as an EPS file and bring it into InDesign. Um, Photoshop, you know, here's a photo that I was playing with earlier. I'll go back in the history. Um, so let's say I had, you know, this was the original photo. So it's, you know, I'm, one thing about Illustrator is, you know, if I scale this image up, you know, the difference is if I scale this up, you know, 300, 345%, uh, you'll see that there's no loss of, of uh, when you, you know, the, the more you enlarge it, I'm enlarging it, the more you, you closer you go, there's no, you know, pixels, there's no breakage of the line, you know, this is really, you know, perfect. So if you're going to do something that's going on a billboard, you know, that has as a logo that's going to be scaled up to a billboard, or sometimes I do signage for conferences, or maybe the size of a pen. Or, or So if I'm in Photoshop, you know, and I'm enlarging this photo, and you can see as I get closer and closer and I, I blow it up, they're all pixels, they're all little squares, and they're making up this image, but the naked eye, you can't really see that from that distance, so it's it looks perfectly fine. But as I scale this image up, I get rid of the background layer, and I scale this image. And uh, as I scale the the Illustrator image just now, you saw it was perfect, no matter what size. Um, as I scale this Photoshop image, and I'm making it bigger, and somebody gave me an image it was too small, and I go in Photoshop and enlarge it. You know, I might get to 150%, it may be okay. So I start getting closer and closer. You notice how you know we start getting these really blurred lines. The resolution is starting to get a little bit messed up. So it's only so far you could you want to enlarge images in Photoshop. Um, obviously, this is a very high resolution image, so you can kind of get away with sometimes scaling things up. But a lot of the times, you kind of want to be careful that you don't scale things too much. So. <clears throat> Um, again, but you can do so many different effects. So, like for instance, uh, I'll change this image to a duotone. I'll show you in a minute. But InDesign. So here I have an InDesign document. You know, I've added some text. I can go in. I can you know make the font smaller. I can play with the lettering. 
I can do a lot of different things much more quickly than I would ever do in Illustrator or Photoshop. And I want to be able to bring elements in to InDesign from Illustrator and Photoshop. So here I want to bring my logo in. I'm going to um, place it. Um, I'm going to place that AI file directly in there. I can kind of quickly, using a lot of shortcuts, you know, move the elements around. You know, I can line things up. You know, I can move things around so much more easily. I'm going to take another image and bring in the, the photo of the car, uh, Apple D, to quickly bring that photo in. So let's say, uh, let me save it back, go back to Photoshop. So PSD is the it's a native file for Photoshop, and you can save it as a PSD file, or you can save it as a TIFF file. Right? TIFF file is probably better. It compresses it, you know, file size-wise. Um, I'm going to replace that one that's in there already. You know, I have layers. It's going to make it a little bit bigger. That's fine. Um, and I'm going to quickly add that car TIFF file in there. And I could enlarge this photo. I'm using a lot of shortcuts and then InDesign is really great. A lot of shortcuts to make elements. You know, I can make the box, the bounding box bigger and still show the car. Or I could you know, make the car and the bounding box bigger and you know, smaller as I have as I need to. I can move it around. So we have this white box around this car. It looks kinda odd. So maybe we want to get rid of that white box and change the color of this car. So I will go into Photoshop and do that. Uh, so I want to kind of get rid of that background and get rid of my little marchionette selections there. And I want to change the color mode to CMYK. I'm going to make it a duotone actually. So I'm going to create a grayscale image first. Then I'm going to go and change it to duotone. So I can have two colors in there. I need to make one. Uh, so you need to have you have to name the colors in a duotone. It's a little dark, so I'll go back in. You know, duotone. Maybe this red will become yellow instead. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Whatever. So I have a um, a new image. I can't save it as CMYK. I have to. Uh, I can't save it as a different format. I want to change it back to CMYK, right? Because I want to make it printable. So I'm going to save that TIFF file. So originally it was uh, the green. I'm tabbing through here. So originally, if you notice now in InDesign, because I have links, right? I linked the file. So I have a link file with my Illustrator file, and I have a linked file that's a TIFF file. But this little uh, icon here is telling me something has been modified. So because I've renamed it as something else, right? So InDesign is bringing in all these links. If you move the links, then you won't have the files anymore. So you gotta keep all your files together. So if I'm gonna do a book, and it's gonna be 60 pages, it's about my company, and it's about things I like to do, and um, it could be architecture, or whatever it might be, photos of myself, my family, whatever it might be, I'm gonna use InDesign to bring all those elements together, right? And be able to export it as a PDF as one PDF file. So let's say I want to get rid of that white background. But I notice that the TIFF file, you know, I want to put a text wrap on it. So I want to put a text wrap and I notice if I put a text wrap, I get a, the, the bounding box, right? So I can increase the text wrap around that to let's say, let's say 0.125, right? Around that image. And then I can change the um, you can detect some of the edges. Now in Photoshop, in order for me to do that, I will probably want to bring the Photoshop file in. So I'm going to save this as a PSD file. And there may be another way to do this. But I'll save it as a PSD file. And I'm going to replace the old one. And then in InDesign, InDesign I'll go back and I'll re-import the PSD instead of the TIFF file. Just replacing that file. So now it kind of for whatever reason the TIFF doesn't find it, but it now it gives me a nicer wrap around that photo in there. Um, so if I click on the image, you'll be able to see this little you'll be able to see the lines that have is created that text wrap around for me. And I could make the text wrap bigger. 
oops, sorry, so I'll make it like maybe 0.25, right? right? And as you, as you make that text wrap bigger, right, you can see it's pushing the text back around. So, you know, bringing in vector images, bringing in bitmap images, and then working with text, you know, you can sometimes have, you know, sort of a nice, you know, drop cap there. Oops, sorry, wrong one. Uh, there you go. So you have, let's say, you have a drop cap, and you want to be able to, you know, manipulate that and change the color of it stuff like that. So, you know, it's really easy in InDesign to do that, you know, creating style sheets. So if I want to have a style that I can use everywhere, that's good, my text style. So that's what you want to use InDesign for. You know, and InDesign is great at doing master pages, you know, so if you want to have, and so I have multiple pages in this document, but I can create a master page up here and whatever I put on the master page, you know, let's say it's the you know page number, and I can add um, a special character, current page number. I can make that however big I want. I can change the font, right? And that will be on every page. So every page will now have a page number on every page. Right? And I could remove that page number at the first page if I wanted to. I can delete it and it will still be on other pages. So you have the ability to manipulate and if I want to go back and I want to add like a nice little maybe a graphical element to this page in InDesign. Let's say I want to add like a little color element there. To every page, well, I can go back and so it's going to automatically do it on every page for me because I changed page one, the number went away, but the icon stayed, and I can get rid of that icon. So, having a lot of control over something that is a multi page document, you can kind of quickly create layouts, you can make templates, and, and you can quickly duplicate pages and make master pages. But so, you know, anything that's multi page. And now with, with all the web stuff that's going on, so you can create tablet design and InDesign, um, but you still want to bring in the elements outside. You may bring in other elements like HTML elements. You may bring in flash elements. You may bring in um, animated. You may bring in movie elements. So there's so many different things you can use InDesign for now. It's not just a print document anymore, but sort of the basic core of what it was always kind of created for is publications. So whether it's digital publications or print publications, you know, InDesign is, is one of the most powerful programs now. And Photoshop, amazing for photos and anything that you want to really go in and manipulate. And you know, use Illustrator for this vector base. So you have a lot of infographics going on now on the, on the web. It's a lot of vector images, a lot of vector illustrations. You know, keep these um, keep these elements separate so you can manipulate them in the program it was created for and then bring them into you know the program like InDesign where you can really manipulate the layout and have more control over the layout and then be able to export so I can export this document you know into many different formats I can make it a print document I can make it a you know I can make it a print document I can make it interactive I can make it an EPS there's so many different formats that you can then export from InDesign, so somebody can be able to view it. So if I, if it was it, if this was an interactive, you know, like a form where people could submit a form and type into it, it'd be interactive. If it was just a print piece going to a printer, uh, if this was a uh, a banner that I wanted to put online, I can save it as a PNG. Um, I can save it down to a lower version by using an InDesign markup language to save it as a lower version of InDesign, uh, JPEG, XML. So it's really, really, really powerful program. And Adobe has done an amazing job of just uh, giving us really strong, powerful tools to you know really keep creating um, great layouts and great design. So hopefully this was a, a really fast, uh, quick sort of down and dirty tutorial of how to really manipulate, uh, how to reuse the three different programs and what's the best um, usage of each of these and you know again this is just like really good design standards and um, people may have other opinions but um, I think that's 
It's going to really help you in the future to, to create great design. Thank you.